Hi, Kurt. This is Danielle. I just wanted to reach out and wish you a very happy congratulations on your 500th episode of the Geek and Podcast. I'm so very grateful to be a part of this Geek and Podcast family, and I can't wait to see my friends every year now at G3. Please keep the great shows coming. Congratulations. so much danielle for the intro i hope you had a great time at the grand geeking gathering hey disney world geeks curtis stone here i'm the podfather host of this amazing geekin family welcome to episode 534 of the geekin on walt disney world podcast this week a few of my dude friends andy hoffman jeff kessler glenn kessler dan robinson and nick ayub review g3 food halloween party jelly rolls the quest for geeking glory and more and i've been having fun talking and hanging out with friends like Andy, Jeff, Glenn, Dan, and Nick, reviewing trips to Disney parks for over nine years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips, and now we bring on our Disney geeks to tell their trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports and we do encourage a family atmosphere here on the podcast. We'd love for you, too, to join our Geekin family. We have an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WDW Family. Ask your questions. Share your trip pictures. Just have fun with one of the best group of Disney World geeks out on the Internet. And we are independent Disney authorized travel guides with FTC Elite Travel. We'd love to be your Disney travel guides. Help you book your room, tickets, dining reservations. We love to talk to you guys about Disney World every single day. You'll notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips or they transfer their trip bookings over to Travel and Tierras. Yeah, you can book your own trips and give Mom and Judy the credit for that trip. It's easy to do. It doesn't cost you anything to do it. Just get their help by starting an email with them, travelandtierras at gmail for Margita and Auntie Judy. Just check the show notes on that podcast app that you listen to the show. Check the email on our website when you're ready to book. And we'll get this fun to Disney World started. This week's featured trip report, yeah, is with my pals, some dudes, Andy, Jeff, Glenn, Dan, and Nick. A review of the Grand Geek and Gathering from their perspective. We always start with resorts and food. We got Beer Garden, Skipper Canteen, Yak and Yeti, Steakhouse 71. Seer and Sea, uh, that's a new one. Homecoming, Boma, Sanaa. Shiki Sai, am I saying that right? That's the new one in Japan Pavilion that took over for the Tokyo Dining Experience at Epcot. Glenn goes into great detail of that one. Food and Wine Booths, Tipsy Ducks in Love, something I've always wanted to do, thanks to Dan Robinson. I had that with him in Epcot. Much more love for grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> it just blows my mind how much... Our geeks love the grilled cheese sandwiches in Disney World. Space 220, go over first times and must do some of the events, Halloween party, jelly rolls, boys to men concert, some of the new stuff they did, and lasting memories. Do you have any idea how much fun it is to go to Disney World with 86 of your weird Disney internet friends? <laughs> Come along with me and a few of my favorite dude friends, and we'll show you how we go to Disney World. <music> All right, it's time for the Grand Geek and Gathering, the G3 roundtable number one with a bunch of dudes. My good pal Andy Hoffman sent me a text saying if he could be on one of the roundtables. I said you could if you could bring some friends with you. He's brought a couple of dudes on, so we're going to get this started. Dan Robinson is here, Jeff Kessler, Nick Ayub, Andy Hoffman's here, and I think Glenn Kessler will be along as soon as he gets done with his coaching baseball. Hey, guys. Hey, Kurt. Hey, Kurt. Hey, Kurt. Hey, good, Kurt. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks back into the working thing. How you all been? Really good. Tough getting back into the swing of things. Yeah. 
a good old Disney trip. I know. I had a real long one. You can't one. complain. Dan, have you been on the podcast before? I don't know. You have. I, yeah. I thought, just as I said that, I remember now. It's been a while, though. It has been a while. Yeah. These other characters have been around a few times, I think, as of late, within the last year or so. When was the last time you were on, Dan? It was back last summer, I think. Okay. Very good. You got a big a family in, I think last June. Yeah. So first time to the G3 for Dan, right? Yeah, because it was awesome. Your Let's first, talk about it. Yeah. What's your first impression? I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I had done a geek meet, Maryland geek meet with Renaissance Festival, where I met several, like a, like a mini group. It was, that was fun. So at least I had knew some people, but I came down solo with minimal expectations, didn't know what to expect. I just came down, thought I'd go to a couple of the events, see how things went. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised, very welcoming, had a blast. Mm -hmm. um, can't wait to, till the next one is scheduled. It was just, uh, it was a lot of fun. So thanks for the, thanks for the community you, for you fit in with us, some of us. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, think, oh, oh. it was a great. Yeah. I'm glad I got a good amount of time to spend with you. We'll talk about all that stuff. I'm going to use some of the questions I got for my trip report with you guys, but we'll kick it off with the review of our resorts and food. And then we'll go down through some of these questions. Are you guys ready? Do you have lots of notes from the trip? Sure. And 20 minutes ago. All ready. right. <laughs> yeah. Any nuances you can bring from your side of things would be awesome. Dan, where did you stay? Who'd you stay with? I stayed at top by myself. <laughs> okay. Um, I chose that just, I, I like the Skyliner option. We That's where we stayed when I stayed with the family. Yeah. And it was value resort, but actually brings a little extra value with the Skyliner. Yeah. So right. uh, it was nice. Were there any other geeks there? Did you run into some in the resort? I did not. No. I think there were some there, but I did not run into any okay. while I was floating around. I didn't, actually didn't spend a whole lot of time at the resort. Didn't run into anybody there. And Jeff, where were you? You, you were with Danielle, right? Yep. We were at Bay Lake Tower, which is our home resort, but the first time we had ever stayed there. So it was nice to see our actual home. And right. it was a beautiful room. We got a one bedroom there and it was actually staggered arrival. So I arrived Friday or Thursday morning uh, from D.C. And then she was in Wyoming for work all week. So she flew from Wyoming mm -hmm. and got there late Thursday. It was actually Friday morning at about one o'clock is when she finally got in. And then we had a roommate in Rob Madiri. He showed up about 1 p.m. on Friday afternoon mm -hmm. and then stayed with uh, us out in the main room on Friday and Saturday night. Awesome. We were hoping Rob was going to be in on this call. And your brother Glenn's going to join, I think I said. I don't know if I said already, but he's going to try to join here in a little bit. So what's your first impressions of Bay Lake Tower now that you got a chance to stay there? It's It was beautiful. It's just very clean. There's not really too much theming, so to speak. It's contemporary, but it just, it felt like just a normal hotel, but fleet glides, everything was nice. The room was gigantic. And I really liked that the one bedroom had two full bathrooms in it yeah. um, because with Rob staying with us, it was almost like he got to have his own space and then we had our own space. So yeah. that was really nice and good view. We looked out over the pool area, which was nice. What floor were you on? Four, I think. No, three. Okay. Three we were so not too high, but good enough. Awesome. And Nick, you and Carlin, where did you guys stay? We stayed at our house down next. Okay, I'm glad. <laughs> not exciting, but no leaks this time. Uh, so that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah, the ceiling's fixed, you can't even tell anymore. Okay. So no drama. It was nice. I did want to possibly stay one night, but I don't know. Some of the, the Swan and Dolphin has got me. A little carried away with their prices sometimes. So. All right. And when did you guys start hitting the G3 events? We started on, on I guess on Friday. We went to Mickey's Not So Scary. So okay. that would probably be the first. We went to <laughs> Trader Sam's first. There you um, go. Yeah, that was a blast. But uh, yeah, so Thursday, I would say Trader Sam's Mickey's Not So Scary was our first official event but met up with you guys on thursday night at bay lake how far is your house from the parks from bay lake tower it's probably like three to five minutes oh wow you're right we're there. like right behind uh magic kingdom that's outstanding 
Oh, yeah. Good place to be. Oh, yeah. Andy Hoffman. I think you were in Bay Lake Tower with some of those two-bedroom suites. Yeah, I, the first two nights I was in a one-bedroom, and then the last few nights I switched over to a, a two-bedroom, and now that I've enjoyed a three-bedroom villa, a two-bedroom and a one-bedroom, a Bay Lake Tower is an amazing place. Mm. Better than the Riviera? You can't compare the two. Yeah, because I stayed with you at the Riviera. That's why it's, it's so very special, true. right? We had a special moment. It was very true. I didn't see much of you. I miss you, Andy. Did I? I don't think we saw each other that much on this trip. No, I saw you a bit at the, the treehouse and other that. No, I wasn't um, at the treehouse. Oh, you weren't. That's that why me. I didn't see you. No, it must have been somebody else that looked like you. I, I probably confuse you with Kevin Curtis Allen. Yeah, a lot of people um, do. No, I didn't see you much. I just, I think our, our, we were going on opposite directions most of the trip. I'm glad I'll get to hear your trip report then, see what, what the heck you were yeah. doing. Let's hit the favorite restaurants, Dan. Did you have any ADRs planned or what did you do for being a solo yeah i did not because I, again i didn't know what to expect i just i typically am a bit of a planner with the family and everything and we like to do some sit down so i just came down there with a hey i'm just gonna go enjoy the parks quick service as required or necessary when i get hungry etc uh, a little bit more relaxing without any real agenda mm -hmm. just so that if i did run into people or had those events i could uh, easily uh, enjoy them so I didn't have any. You didn't sneak in at any sit-down restaurants at all with us? Okay. I did go to Beer Garden with all right. you all. But yeah, tell me. You yeah. You stuck into a Skipper Canteen. Yes. Okay. So I didn't make any ADRs myself, but, yeah. but the geeks were kind enough to let me tag along to yeah. a few places. Yes. I See, so. I thought maybe so. You're pulling it out of me. That's right. I had my suspicions. Yeah, which, which is exactly why I didn't make any ADRs because <laughs> I took advantage of meeting up with people. It was great. Yeah. What, any Anything outstanding at Skipper Canteen? I had the Jungle Bird drink, and we I had we shared some appetizers, which were pretty good. Yeah, that was on my must-do. How's the Jungle Bird? It was good. Is yeah, that a bourbon good. drink? I'm not sure. I think it's rum, rum okay. beast. All right. That was good. I just recognized the name because it was supposed to be on my list, but I never got over to Skipper Canteen myself. I don't have, no friends invited me over there. No, actually, I think I, I had plans to go, but who knows? I think I had a lot of restaurants back to back going on. So that was probably why hey, I you were that. there for quite a while. So I'm not sure you keep track of your list of where all the places you went. I did good. I'm, did you listen to my trip report? I didn't think I did. I did. I, yeah. think I did pretty you, good. You did pretty good. Yeah. I'm a professional. I have to do it. This, I have to be, I got to show up. How about the beer garden? What'd you think of that? Yeah, beer garden was awesome. I, I like, Buffets. I know some people aren't a fan. I was actually listening to Dave on the Crusher podcast recently where he said he doesn't really like buffets and doesn't like to touch all the utensils and everything. But <laughs> yeah. I just I dig in. I like it because I like the variety. I agree. Uh, and I like German food. So that was awesome. All the sausages and the sauerkraut and the meats and the, yeah. the apple strudel and of course the the beer for Oktoberfest. <laughs> but that was that was great, great food and great company. So I enjoyed that. I know. I was looking at that picture. We got a great picture on the floor of the beer garden. That was good. I, I think everyone in that place was shocked when about 90% of the restaurant <laughs> got up and walked to the That's center right. for the picture. Good fun. Six, there's, I think 65 were planning to be there all together. This picture certainly, I didn't count them, but it looks pretty close. That's yeah, awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. The band was going. It was all fun. Oh, Glenn's coming in already. He's just in time for food. Glenn is coming in and his audio is clicking on. There he is. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Glenn. How are you? Sorry for the lateness, guys. That's all right. What's up, Glenn? Hey, Glenn. What's up, hey, fellas? Glad you could Look at that in. microphone you got there. Wow. Very fancy. Got my gimbal and everything. He's a pro. He's yeah. looking. Trying to be. Yeah, I'm starting my art podcast soon enough. It looks good. You'll have to bring in the good food uh, reviews, Glenn. I'll give you a second to settle in. I'm going to Jeff next. And then I got Nick and Andy ahead of you. Jeff, any good standout restaurants? Did you guys try anything? We had a couple ADRs. Uh, first day, we went with a couple other geeks to Yak and Yeti. Or not we. I, Danielle wasn't there yet. So I went with a bunch of other geeks. Yeah. Went to Yak and Yeti. It was more like a nomad style. We just split the tuna nachos, which were good as always. But I got this really special drink where it was on like their specialties menu mm. and it was margarita-ish. It had tequila, 
pineapple juice. Here's the weird stuff. It had cumin and turmeric in it as well. That is weird. So it tasted like you were drinking like a taco, but then you got the pineapple margarita right behind it. And it was, it was sweet, salty, savory all together and was absolutely delicious. So oh, I don't know how long it'll be on the menu, but I, I hope that they'll still be there in November because we have an ADR when my yeah. family goes back in November. Very different. I like that. Yak and Yeti. I think we were talking. We're, we got a January trip planned. We're, I think that was on the maybe list. Nice. I like that nice. one. Any other good then ones? We, yep. Then we did uh, Steakhouse 71. Just Danielle and I did a breakfast there for first day back in. And I got the bottomless mimosas. And then I got the filet. And I had a lot of filets, actually. I was only there for three days. And I had four filets. So <laughs> Well done. <laughs> My it was uh, an Andy-inspired meat intake, yes. Uh, that's, uh, that's up my alley, too. And I didn't know they had it for breakfast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, steak and eggs. So yeah. you get the uh, the filet right. and whatever style of eggs you want with it. Everything was, was great. Our waiter was on top of things. As soon as my drink was down to about a quarter full, he had another one waiting there for me. And yeah, that's important. Yeah. Even after we paid, he brought me one last one uh, <laughs> as, uh, to yeah. quickly take down before we left. So it was... <laughs> Good, good start to the weekend. They never end there. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then other than that, it was Beer Garden, same as everybody else. And okay. I love that place. It was a, I had gone there at the TDC uh, gathering for the first time. And so I was looking forward to the uh, cucumber salad of all things. That was just <laughs> something that stood out to me that last time. I think I got three, three servings worth of just that. Uh, and then the brats and everything else were delicious. <laughs> that, for some reason, stands out for me. You know what else they had on that buffet? I don't know if it was hidden. Near the carving station, there was a gravy with beef in there. Oh, yeah. I, go ahead. I think Thank you, you told me about it after I was thinking I was done, and I ran back and got just a plate of that, and it was really good. <laughs> that's that, Glenn, that's that tender beef we talk about. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also a good reason to travel with 50 of your closest friends. I can tell you what you might have missed at the buffet. <laughs> yeah, did you have the beef next to the beef or dessert that might stand out or something? Yeah, great point. Nick, let's get some from you. Any others that we didn't hit yet? Yeah, so the only advanced dining we had was Fear Garden, which, I don't know, that kind of food just fills me up so <laughs> quick. In the future, again, I enjoyed the atmosphere and, of course, our, our people and the the yeah. entertainment up there. I will go back just for that. Had you um, been there before? No, that was our first time. Wow, I can't promise it's going to deliver like we delivered it. <laughs> no, I knew. <laughs> you know how but, we do it. Nick, when we go to a place. I know. The picture says it all. <laughs> we we took over that place. But I will say one one place that we did try for the first time that we loved was Chef Farts. We finally got to, we just walked up to the bar and got seated. So that was a lot of great food. <laughs> we got to order. We got to do a sprint on that night just to. Uh, Went all in? Anything. Yeah. What? What's, what are they known for at homecoming? They're fried chicken, and I got the fried chicken sandwich, and it was really good. But Carlin, she was obsessed with the grits. The grits are, like, milky and just sm smooth but grainy at the same time. It's just it's weird, but it's real good. Ah. And I got to give it to them on their mac and cheese. I am a mac and cheese snob, but they did impress me, like, if there's a place on property so far that I've enjoyed the mac and cheese, it's there. I think that's the one Samantha ranks number one. Is that right? Yeah, it's the undisputed number one. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nailed it, Nick. Yeah, <laughs> well done. That's We got some experts that have ranked that number one. Perfect. Did you get some? Back. That was on my must-do list because I wanted to get the squeezable bottle with moonshine. Did you do that? Did not learn about that until after. <gasps> so next time, though, because, okay. I heard, yeah. Tony Ann said that you could use it again and Refill, yeah. you can you do it Splitsville too. So yeah, I definitely want to get that next time. Now you're hooked to homecoming. Yes, sir. I love it. Andy, since I didn't see you so this I, whole trip, you must have no, went to other places than I went to. I, I did. So Wednesday night for the treehouse, we probably had my favorite meal of the entire trip. And Glenn will probably go into more detail because it's Glenn and he ate a lot more than I did. We went to Sear and C at the GW Marriott. Oh, yeah. I had a flayed on Oscar style, and 
the best steak I've ever had on property. You say that every time you come on the podcast. Yeah, but I really mean it this time. And every other one out of the water. You're the king of the recency bias, Andy. I don't know about <laughs> I am. I probably could go have some steakums from the Speedway <laughs> gas station and say, oh, that was great. <laughs> I'm only laughing because I'm the same way, I think. It was it was amazing that they had an amazing burrata salad. I am not a salad person. I think the best testimonial to that was to our friend Trey. I've never heard somebody get that excited over a salad. Okay. It was amazing. Also did Steak Out 71, did the steak and eggs with a bottomless mimosa. And also Jeff Kessler did the beer garden. Also did the ahi tuna nachos at Yak and Yeti. Now, that DW Marriott, where is that exactly? Tell people where that is. I believe it's over at, at Glen, it's over to the Bonnet Creek area. Yeah. yeah. It is at Bonnet well, Creek, right? So it's technically on property. You can see them when you're on the Skyliner and you're coming from Hollywood Studios towards Riviera. You can see big buildings off in the distance and it's, it's in that Bonnet Creek yeah. area. So it's on property. It doesn't take... <laughs> It probably was quicker to get there than it would be to like Animal Kingdom Park or something. Yeah, very true. One one thing with the with the bottomless mimosas and Jeff, I don't know if you and Danielle encountered this, but our waitress who was amazing, whose name I'm totally blanking on, very unique name. Was it like Skippy? Yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Skippy. Yeah, she was awesome. We asked about the bottomless mimosas, and she said that thanks a lot of TikTokers and other people on social media, and they're very much limited to on how many of the bottomless mimosas you can have. There'd been a lot, at, at, at the moment, you could have changed every day. They're being a little more strict on what they could do. Now, she was very cool with us, but she said they no longer allow people to have to go mimosas. Jeff got one. But other than that, I, didn't, oh, I wasn't allowed one? to take it to go. Oh. He gave it to me after I paid, but yeah, he wasn't letting me walk out with it. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, can we get this to go? And she's like, no. Okay. Then I was talking with Matt. I'm like, if you're smart enough, especially if you're at, say, Bay Lake, where you got the to go coffee cups in your cupboard I know. because I was being one of your styrofoam coffee cups down with the lid and pour yourself one <laughs> a little roady to go. I've heard of that trick. But this is the, the one trip I think. Oh, and then maybe I'll go ahead and talk about it too. But we had a, a group of us. We did a, a charity fundraiser for Give Kids the World with Tori Hunt. And she made an amazing meal for us Thursday night, like three even fired dinner. So that was a great, that was a great time and, and for a great cause. I went to Epcot twice. I did absolutely nothing from the food. I'm going to ask everybody if they did any food booths after I do Glenn. We'll get I, Glenn's. I did. Okay. All right, Glenn, you're up. Wow. I'll actually have one that wasn't on this list. I'll close with that. But I just want to echo so many of these incredible meals. And why not just, can we go into the Seer and See? This was actually not on my radar uh, before the trip. Uh, we had been trying to go to Kappa. If you guys know, that is a Michelin star restaurant. But they were closed for a couple of days or weeks and it just happened to overlap our trip so we flexed to michelin mentioned restaurant was c and seer in the jw area and oh my god andy it was so good i did not get any of your steak and i'm very upset with you you sat literally next to me and did not tell me how great that steak was so i had no bites it was gone before i even looked over there <laughs> but i was i was not unhappy with my steak tartar which I got as an appetizer. So they, this was probably the best single item that I ate that meal. That was, it looked like a hockey puck. <laughs> Don't judge <laughs> on the appearance. It looked like a hockey puck of cat food. It was the most delicious melt in your mouth. Perfect the seasoning and flavoring, just very mild, but, but beef tartare, unbelievable. Oh, I should start with, actually, I had a drink, a, an old fashioned that they brought in like a cage. Deirdre got one too. And it was in like a glass cage, smoke. You couldn't see anything inside until you unlatched it, opened it up, the smoke spilled out, and there was your drink. The presentation was awesome. <laughs> then Andy mentioned the salads. We got some oysters. There was bone marrow. Oh, that's <laughs> one of your favorites. opportunity to eat bone yeah. marrow. This was actually not very good bone marrow. I would say the, the, the bones were Flintstone size, but the meat inside was like, so meager, so <laughs> minimal. It's like the meat jelly, and there wasn't enough to share. <laughs> Weird. We did get scallops as well. I, and we've just, like, everybody got a bunch of stuff, and we just nibbled and, and scallops. They also came under 
a smoke filled <laughs> top and they pulled the top off and the the waiter just swirled it around, made a big show of that. They were delicious. They were probably the second best thing. Perfectly cooked scallops. Uh, it's hard to lose with scallops. And uh, and then they had a really good mac and cheese. It does not hold par, unfortunately, with, with the homecoming. But I would probably put this two or maybe three. The one that I had at Boathouse uh, that we talked about from the August trip with the andouille sausage and the shrimp. That was probably my number two. That jumped up to number two. This would probably be my number three, though. It's very creamy. Just perfectly cooked. Nice. So put that on your list, Nick. <laughs> you got it. And then there were a bunch of sides that that we got there. Brussels sprouts that were superb. And there were some mushrooms that were a little too acidic. I don't know if you got any of those, Andy, with your with your steak. No, but I had some of yours and I thought they were good. Yeah. Not my favorite part of the meal, but they were pretty good. Okay. We were too stuffed for dinner, for dessert, I would say. So yeah. that, that was and the dessert. But the one thing that was disappointing, the dessert menu looked very disappointing. Mm-hmm. For as much as everything else looked superb, the this dessert menu let, didn't leave much to the imagination. It's funny, we, we joked because none of us could remember the name of the place. So we kept calling it Salt and Sear oh, and Sear straw. Sucker. Yeah. yeah, you call it Sear Sucker. But it, it's funny because the, they really did focus on the Sear and the Sea and did not yeah. focus on the salt and the straw, the ice cream and the desserts Correct. and everything like that. <laughs> Clearly lacking. Nice. So that's where you got to go afterwards. But that was a you, great And you do not need a Sear Sucker suit to go to in the place. <laughs> Although it would fit, it would fit in. It actually. would, it would, and it's a little more say casual. I don't think any of us wore shorts. I think a lot of us wore. No, I wore shorts in a polo shirt, but it's like Citrico's. You don't go in a t-shirt and swim trunks like you might be wandering wand away from the pool with the poly going to Captain Cook's. Yeah, it was. It had a classy vibe. The restaurant, the uh, did. resort, did. I would say not as stuffy as Grand Floridian, kind of Riviera, yeah, energy and uh, contemporary kind of energy. Great place to to stop by. Easy to Uber to. What else? Beer garden. I embarrassed myself at beer garden. I let my table know that I was going to embarrass myself. Right down. Eight, eight, four full plates. And they like stopped taking them after a while. So they were just stacking up on top of one another. It was crazy. I got a picture of that. I have to have to share. But I am on a mission. Every time I go to a buffet for the first time, I must eat everything. I don't take much, but I make sure that I taste everything i document i take picture it's in completionist so i had to had to go there and yeah i got that steak or whatever it was with the gravy curd it was yeah. amazing yeah some of the some of the sausages were quite good the uh liverwurst was actually surprisingly good if anyone my wife loves that i don't i'll have to ask her if she had some i think she did say she yeah, did. it don't look like much it's, it's one like of, her pate, um, of course it's a little looser than uh than, than some of the other meats but that was so good and to Jeff's point, all the salads were bonkers good. Mm-hmm. Everything with mayonnaise makes a salad better. I'm like, <laughs> we agree on this, people? I love the salad. I love that buffet. I, you, yeah, you're not far off. and not, You wouldn't embarrass me at all. Just keep your hands and feet away from my plate. You'll be fine. That's right. Yeah. You keep your fork and knife <laughs> ready in case, you know, <laughs> low jack. Get your um, own. Boma- yeah, Boma was great. I made a new, a new try, a new invention. We'll see if this catches on. Kurt, I know you don't like the mustard, but I'm still in love with the freaking mustard. It's so good. But I upped it. I took the tater tots, put them in a bowl, and I got that gravy that they've got. Smothered the tater tots with the gravy Ooh. and then threw the mustard on top. <laughs> this is a major win, people. Go try it. It's seal of approval. Now, the only caution is the gravy is a little wet. Yeah, Jeff's writing it down in his notes, I see. Yes. <laughs> Jeff knows the better than to write down the stuff you it- say. I'll get the cliff notes later. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You gotta we'll record so this. The, the gravy does cause the tater tots to disintegrate. So you have to eat them very quickly. If croutons start to yeah. turn back into bread, if they get too wet too long. So you've got to eat it quickly. Don't make too big of a bowl. You can go back for seconds, thirds, or fourths. They do not look strangely at you, especially if you tell them that you're <laughs> Glenn sent you and you're making the, the new tater tot mix. And it was so good. Oh my God. So good. Well, just I got the- to try just to clarify, I didn't say I didn't like the mustard. I said it was, I was underwhelmed from all the hype it got. Yeah, that, this is the problem, right? Seven Dwarfs Mind Train. You're going to go back a couple of years from now and try that mustard. And you're going to say, I built it up too much. I, it, it, I, I thought it was going to be the best thing in the whole world, but it really is quite good. Actually. All you guys told me it was the best I was ever going to have. So yeah, definitely over hyped it. Where did that gravy come from that you put on your tater tots 
Yeah, it was over. It was not far from where the tater tots and everything were. It was just a little bit to the left. What was it supposed so to I don't go know on? what it was served with. Biscuits. Just, biscuits, yeah, biscuits, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I passed on the biscuits. I, I carb loaded with my potato. Yeah. And it was good. Did you I, have it, Dan? Did you have the gravy? I had the gravy and biscuits. I did not mix them with tater tots <laughs> and the mustard. But he, he knew better. But I'm taking notes. <laughs> Follow me for more tips. <laughs> I finally got to Sanaa. I finally got to try the bread service. Oh, you've never been there, really? I'm surprised. I didn't know that. Out of the way, I've stayed at Jumbo a few yeah. times, but never at Kidani. And, and the couple of times I've been over to Kidani, maybe gotten drinks or something like that at the bar, but never sat down with that delicious bread service. And I, oh, I so enjoyed it. Uh. And we had a really good waitress who told us two things. Number one, she told us that you can combine the sauces on your bread, which was a revelation. Oh, boy. <laughs> Speaking of combining. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this happened afterwards. So maybe she uh, had heard about what I had done at Boma over there. But <laughs> it's legendary. <laughs> yeah. So we started because she made some suggestions. She was like, the spicy and the sweet one is really good together. She had a couple of tag teams that were really good and tried them and loved them. Yeah. It was so great. And the second thing she said, which nobody ever knew, I was uh, with Rebecca and she'd been there a bunch of times before. And you can get more, so you can ask for more sauce if you run out of one of them. Who knew? Who knew? So we got more green sauce was our favorite. I can't remember one of the sweet ones. So it was just. I did just, not know that. that you know, what you get is what you get. Mm, that's a good. Maybe you have to get the nice waitress or whatever, <laughs> but. She seemed to have no problem. And we told her at the end, we were like, you opened our eyes to two new things that we could do, combine sauces and get more of them. Like mad scientists here, because there's a lot of bread. Like you, you've been there, Nick, lots of bread. Sauce goes pretty quick. Yeah, they're like really more like ketchup containers full of sauce. Yeah, I, hate yeah. I don't want to run out of sauce. That's the worst thing. No, that is the worst thing. Well, so now no, I got to no tell all the servers down at Disney World when Glenn Kessler's coming, let them know you can mix and match and get more. I'm going to be chatting them up. They're going to tell me all their secrets. We're going to get all the, they're like, hey, we've got some grease Glenn's in coming. the back that if I pour it on it, it tastes better. All right, let's bring it. Try it. All right, I'll close with my last one, which I don't think anyone has eaten at yet, uh, Kurt, because I think you guys canceled yours. Yes, we did cancel it. We had a late night like 8 30 or something which was after i'm sure a long day of eating i forget which day that was and i'm not i haven't gotten into sushi yet i heard it was really expensive but you tell me um i don't look at prices when no. i go to disney world it's better that way <laughs> okay i just you deal with the ramifications when i get home i i love exotic food i i think you and i might differ on the, <laughs> that front uh but they had a Pretty normal pedestrian sushi menu if you wanted to get your first starts with salmon, tuna, eel, things like that, shrimp, uh, kind of easy ones. But then they had other pages of the menu which were incredibly exotic. And we got some weird stuff. Again, with Rebecca, we got some really weird, uh, unique things. In fact, that was our agenda when we sat down. We're like, let's get things that we have not seen in other places, that we've not gotten right. recently in other places or ever before. So. They had a root vegetable that had been sliced paper thin, like linguine long strips, deep fried, and was crispy like a potato chip, but curled up in this nest. It was salted very lightly. It was delicious. I, I would not even think of this as Japanese cuisine, but it was a Japanese root vegetable that they had done this with. It was nice. just a wonderful kind of appetizer. An eggplant cut uh, a Japanese eggplant, which is uh, thinner and longer, almost like a hot dog shape or sausage kind of shape, cut uh, down lengthwise, opened up, and then cooked. I don't know what method they used, but it had turned into gelatin. It was wow. delicious. You scooped it out with a spoon. We didn't have a spoon, so we used our chopsticks and as delicately uh, as we could put that up. That was really good. And I don't like eggplant, but that was great. We got a tomato. This was a salad that was presented elegantly, a whole tomato that had been uh, cut into eighths, but had been reassembled into its body shape on a ponzu, a, a bed of ponzu sauce, avocado, some other microgreens, and then shrimp on top. And that had a nice, again, wow. that ponzu, which is going to be a sweet soy saucy flavor, the flavor that you get on poke. 
and you just hit the shrimp down. The whole thing dissolves into its wedge salad kind of formation, and then you can chop away at it and, and eat the parts. That was lovely. Uh, we got some dumplings, but these dumplings had uh, Wagyu beef in them. Ooh. Unbelievably nice. good. So good there. Uh, just melt in your mouth. We got some of the more exotic uh, sushi offerings, including a an eel that had to have been the whole eel. Like, it, it is 12 inches long, at least. It was really weird looking, draped over a, a like a baseball of rice. Uh, I can show it to you guys as we're on the call here. But that thing is huge. Let me see if that'll render. Oh, yeah. It's a little blurry. It's, split. It, it's just, yeah, it's too blurry on the screen for whatever reason. But... It, it is a foot long piece of eel with the eel sauce that's sweet on top. It was super weird. What'd you say? Was it split? Yeah. It didn't have its head on it or anything like that. <laughs> Cut in it half. It was the meat butterflied Butterfly, open yeah. as they might serve it, but a huge piece. I'd never seen uh, like that before. Mm -hmm. And then we got a whole, a whole fish that was deep fried and you could actually eat the head of the fish. I have some wonderful video of Rebecca eating the cheeks and me eating the eyeballs of the fish the whole thing was deep fried they promised us it was edible i'm still alive so if you like exotic food if you like japanese food go there and even if you are not terribly exotic they have some of the safe stuff so you can go with friends and sample and try some different things they had some good drinks some seasonal drink and that's the other takeaway of shiki sai they change that menu four times a year oh it's wow. seasonal and the fish and the vegetables and Everything is going to be themed to the seasons. Okay. A big difference then from the Tokyo dining that was there previously. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, this was very fun. This would be a good place to go and get shareable bites. And one weird thing we noticed when we were trying to make our reservation, all the uh, bookings were for four or less. But inside of the restaurant, we confirmed there are tables of six and eight and larger amounts. So if you want to go with a larger party, which I highly would recommend so you can share more, get two fours. And then when you come to the restaurant, just let them know that you want to combine two and eight. They do, in fact, have larger tables. Okay. Good job, Glenn. As usual, he brought it. We, we said you probably would. <laughs> Dan, with all of that, did you guys, and the rest of you guys, did you do any of the food and wine booths? Other than, uh, Andy said he didn't, but did any of you guys hit food and wine booths? I, I was very disappointed in my food and wine booth participation. I, after Animal Kingdom, I did go over to Epcot that afternoon or Thursday afternoon. I had gotten an individual lightning lane for Guardian. So I wanted to go over there and I did hit a couple while I was over there. I got the, one of the big winners for me was the Buffalo Brussels sprouts. At the Odyssey booth. Okay, yeah. They were, I'm a big Buffalo wing fan anyway. And I like, I do like Brussels sprouts. I know a lot of people sometimes don't, but I don't know. They were perfectly roasted and the blue cheese and, and buffalo sauce on there with a nice cold beer with it. That was probably my favorite one of the, I yeah. think, three booths that I hit. And then I did also try the Oysters Rockefeller. And I was actually a bit disappointed with that. So it was okay. I've had much more flavorful spinach cheese sauce on the, on the oysters in the past, but it was, it was okay. okay. Yes. Can I say, so in August, I got the oysters Rockefeller and they were superb, had just a little bit of that topping on top and it was very oyster forward. Yes. And then I went and got it again this trip and it was like a Disappointed. completely different thing. Yeah. It was just That's a it. mound so, of spinach on top. It was terrible. So maybe I won't cross that off my list forever. Maybe I'll try it again at some point in the future if it's there again. But anyway, so those were the, I think those were the two booths. The, the problem was I was doing other things at Epcot that evening and didn't, I think it started to rain. So I think I left a little bit earlier. And then the other Epcot day it was, I didn't want to eat before Beer Garden. And then after Beer Garden, there was no way I could eat. So it was, that True. was tough. Right. Yeah, good so point. That, that was one thing. Had I had more time or days or whatever, I, I enjoyed the food and want, just sampling little things in the booths and didn't get a chance to do that as much this time. But what I did hard. try was, like I said, the Brussels sprouts were a hit for me. I think that Odyssey building is exceptional this this year too. There's some good stuff. Agree. The inside chicken. of it with the Muppets was very entertaining mm -hmm. um, as well. So that was cool. Beer, all good stuff, and wings. Can't miss Muppet with team. that. That's right. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Dan for getting a must-do of mine that's been on my list for years, I think, from doing the podcast, people talking about the 
what is it? The Tipsy Ducks in Love? Tipsy Ducks in Love, yeah. I've heard yeah. that. And yeah. when we were walking by there, Dan and I coming through, he, he asked me if I'd like to try that. And I'm so glad I did, Dan. Thank you so much for getting one of those for me. Yeah, that's one of those, I don't know. I've had that in the past and it was refreshing as you're walking around yeah. Epcot. It's right there at the Joy of Tea uh, booth at, at the China Pavilion. It's basically like a iced mocha. It's got black tea and coffee and then, of course, bourbon in there. Adds a like, nice little flair to it. So that was yeah, that was good. And it's a big cup with lights of ice and it hits the spot. That is like a must-do every time going around. I would do my frozen lime margarita and the tipsy ducks in love next to each other any day of the week. Loved it. Thank you. Jeff, did you get your filet mignon? You're famous for it. Not only did I get it once, uh, not twice, three different times. I think I heard this rumor. So yeah, we confirmed. went to Thursday after Animal Kingdom. I was on a mission to get the pretzel bread pudding. So I relocated over to whatchamacallit, to Epcot. And was, side note, I don't know if we're going to these things. That was the most G3 awesome things ever was people were all over and I went onto the um, messenger chat and I'm like, I'm going alone to get this pretzel bread pudding. Anybody at Epcot? And then Brooke Everett says, I'm here. I'll meet you. Nick and Carlin said, we're here. We'll meet you. And um, Samantha Carpin was like, I'm not there, but I'll come over and meet you. And a beacon, we all ended up converging and ended up over getting that pretzel bread pudding from Germany. But on on my way to that, I stopped when I was just me and Brooke at that point and grabbed my first of the filet. The next, then the Saturday when we were all there, when we're waiting between the early boys to men show and the late boys to men show, we decided to stand in the line and Danielle walked clear around from USA to Canada, got two fillets and brought them all the way back to me, Jackie and Selena so that we could have some food while we waited in line for the last show. So we wow. could be in the front row for boys to men. She's a keeper. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then when on uh, Sunday, we wanted one last trip over to Epcot. So before our, we left for the airport, we left Hollywood Studios, went in the Skyliner over, and of course got one more one more fillet. Well done. I love that point you just made with the the messenger chat, which sometimes I'm worried it's going to annoy people, but it sure comes in handy when you want to bring a few friends along to something you're doing. I will agree, and that was a a great like kind of kickoff for Carlin. I forgot to mention that was even before I think meeting up with you guys at Bay Lake Tower. That would have been Thursday, right? Yeah. That we did. Yeah, Carl and I went straight to Epcot as soon as we got to the house. So. Okay, perfect. What is hey, that? Jeff, I will tell you, I am very jealous of your three fillets because that is one of, that kind of is one of my must-do food booths, and I, I did not uh, do it this time. I was very disappointed. Same with so me. So I'm yeah. good, good on you. Yeah. yeah. Danielle also found out, this is a, a pro tip from Danielle, not, I'm always just a sheep following. Apparently, not the there's a line that's closer to Canada as well. I usually get in the line as you're coming in, for circling around from Mexico to Canada, there's the line. And I feel like everyone who goes there. But if you go to the opposite side of the booth, there's an entirely other line. And the, by the time she went, she found it. And then on the Sunday or on the, yeah, on the Sunday when we went back there, there was like 10 people in line on the right side and two open checkers with nobody in line on the left side. So oh. look for that. It might be at other booths too. I didn't see it at other booths, but they weren't always open, but always check for yeah. lines on the opposite side. You might get lucky and have no one over there. That, I had always assumed that one on the left was just for the drinks. Cause the drinks are at the left side, but you can get the food there too. You can get everything. Fun, good fun, find. Good stuff. Nick, did you have any food booths? How is that pretzel bread pudding? It was good. I got it as well. I enjoyed it. I'm just like a pretzel bread or, or a, I guess, bread pudding, um, bread pudding kind of guy. Mm. But I, I did a little saltiness to it, and they loaded it up with some vanilla sauce on mine. So, yeah. Mm. I guess it was a little dry, but the vanilla sauce. It was drowning in the sauce, but it wasn't soft. You had to come in with the fork. Yeah. It couldn't come in with the side of the fork to really break into it. Exactly. Like maybe a little heat up 
right before they hand it to you, it might soften it up a little bit, but it was good. I, w- I would get that again. As far as food booths go, I think we all we did, it was the same night. We I stopped at the Grease booth and just got that griddled cheese. It has some honey and pistachio on it. Oh, yeah. Um, We've gotten that before, and I would say it's probably it was probably better before. It wasn't as warm this time. It was just mm. cold. But when it has that little, like, heat to it from the griddle with that honey and pistachio, it's amazing. But, yeah, we were just going all over the place. We didn't really do that many booths this year. So Okay. And do you want to redeem yourself in this food category in any sort of way? Miscellaneous? I, I did. Uh, one miscellaneous thing I had for the first time, I've always heard great things about the uh, grilled cheese at Beaches and Cream. And that thing is amazing. When we were at Jelly Rolls, Wendy, Smith, and I were hungry, so we snuck over there. And we all got grilled cheese. They both got the tomatoes, who I did not. But yeah, that grilled cheese, it's amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. Although... I've never had it. I can't get past a Reuben and a French dip to go to a cheese. It's tough. I almost went with the French dip, but I said, you know what? I want to try this grilled cheese, and I'm glad I got it. Uh, someday I am going to waste a, a meal on that. I had that and then a, <laughs> like a boozy milkshake that was pretty good. Really? Okay. I love Kurt, why don't, next time you go, Kurt, why don't you go with two other friends? And each of you order one of those, cut them three ways, uh, and you get the sampler. Thank you, Glenn. Oh, that, that's perfect. Glenn's an expert at this. Very well done. That's like your own buffet, right? You <laughs> just create your own yeah. buffet. I did have that problem at Beaches and Cream, but I won't share my No Way Jose. I don't care. Don't go near my No Way Jose. That's no, my, we got to have we gotta have some laws. I'm not sharing that. Time. That's ridiculous. Hey, No Way Jose. <laughs> it's not break. No way. <laughs> no way. Touching my Jose. No way, Jude. Hey, Glenn. Did you do any food booths? You like doing sampling around, but you did some already this year. Did I do any food booths? They might have heard about a little something called Tori and Glenn travel around. Ah. Huh? World show. So Tori and I had been talking after August when I went around solo that day before anyone got there and was sampling from the booths. And she said, Glenn. My husband works in, you know, and stuff like that. He's got a cool microphone rig and he's good with the camera and we know how to do editing and stuff like that. Let's you and me go around World Showcase and eat all the food booths and make a little video out of it. And so we did. We saved that until after G3 festivities had occurred. And I, I want to say it was the Tuesday, maybe. Days are blurring. And we went around and we ate a bunch of food, some that I'd already had in August and some new ones, and we documented it. So I'm sure you can find that on the Friends of the Disney Crushes YouTube channel for in perpetuity, because I think it's come down off the Facebook page. Maybe it's been a, a little while. But man, did we have some funny antics. We had the Oysters Rockefeller, and I talked about how terrible it was this time versus the other time. The crab cake, which was, Dan, it was awful, awful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Marylanders unite. And this was terrible. You can't do that. You just can't have crab outside Maryland. That's you know better. That's like against the law, I think. Hey, I forgot to tell this story. Kurt, you were there when we went to Steakhouse 71 on that first day that, that I arrived yeah. with, with Susan Cox and who else was there? Wendy and your crew. I saw that there was a crab cake on the menu and I made a joke to the waitress that I'm not ordering crab cake because I'm from Maryland. And she's like, oh, they chef the head chef is from maryland and i was like what all (laughs) right fine bring it it was better than the food and wine was it was all so terrible i told her i was like you need to take that man's license back away from him i don't know that's not good he's lying Um, maybe he lied on his resume he's been in florida too long is what happened (laughs) gotta come back western Western maryland far away from the ocean exactly It's not a big state, but you can be far enough away from the crab. You're a lot harder on the crabbers than I am the lobster men in Florida. <laughs> yeah, I've got a very critical. Marylanders are tough about their flag, about their football, okay. uh, and about their crabs. Uh, we got a couple of things that don't mess with us, please. <laughs> uh, what else did we get? Uh, we went to India and swing and a miss on the idea that you can turn paneer into fried mozzarella it is terrible <laughs> as a fry paneer is their, their cheese but it's so dense it's so solid it doesn't turn into that like stringy wonderful it just was a complete mess but i did enjoy the uh chicken tikka masala as well as the samosa which was a veggie samosa potato and pea uh was good there yeah we just we got a couple of other little things from the kenya booth the uh 
China booth and some others. But uh, yeah, I, I don't want to bore you guys with it because you can go see that video, which is so, just so hilarious, I think. And we even got Dave uh, Youngward to eat a vegetable, which it was on camera. It happened. It'll never happen again. Uh, the magic sometimes happens at Disney World, people. He's all done with vegetables. That was it. That was it. He said he'd be on the toilet lift or that. I was like, he ate <laughs> one bite of a pepper or something like that. And I, I think we have issues if uh, that's going to take you there. I think we did pretty good with the food, guys. Let's go on Man. to, I wonder, I did this for my trip report. Did you guys have any must-dos for this trip that you accomplished? And then go in any order. I kind of threw that one at you from left field. But did you have anything you were looking forward to that you got a chance to do? I'll finish up with this will be a food thing so we can keep Kevin's clean line of when he starts listening or not. Because Space 220 was a restaurant that I had wanted to go to six months before it opened. No, I should say three years and six months before it opened because they announced the thing and it sounded so incredible. And I wanted to go and I wanted to go. And every time I thought I was going to go, something fell apart. And it four, five, six times became comical. I finally got there on this trip. Oh, I didn't know. It was a must do. And it was consummated. We got there and I lived my best life in Space 220. Good. I think I had five drinks is what I counted up in the hour that we were there, Kurt. I, I had, thought so. <laughs> I thought they were flowing pretty good next door to me. And, and it was that was a good energy. We had two tables right next to one another. Maybe three, actually. Didn't we have three tables uh, right next to one another? It was so wonderful to be in that lounge area. You could order whatever you wanted. We got all the little appetizers and shared them. I, I just absolutely loved it everything about that experience except that there could have been more performance on the windows i thought there were yeah. some astronauts that flew in for a minute and a half and then they were gone <laughs> i want to see lightsaber battles out there i want to meet a planet or where's the iss or something like that so miss missed opportunity maybe they plus that as time goes on but mm -hmm. uh, we had a very good time the company was great and the food and the drinks were really outstanding good job i will say it as well i prefer the lounge when i go there i i do feel like the other is a little overpriced for what you're getting. Like, I'd rather go relax and keep ordering stuff and, you know, get drinks like you said. But I do agree. I, I think maybe the, the windows, they could do maybe like a, on Star Wars Day or something, maybe have a Star Wars battle happen outside, you know, change it up a little bit. But that'd be crazy. I agree with the lounge. I'm glad you got to experience that. Mm. It's great. Anyone else get a must do done? Yeah, I had, I had a couple. I think I overhyped them. I think I always overhype them when they're must-dos. The Wookiee cookie let me down a years back, years past. Sorry, I see Nick. It's just what? I think it was just, I'm not saying they're bad. I think I just elevated it too high. Glenn was saying, Kurt's seven dwarfs. I just, I think I over-elevated these things. And the ones that I over-elevated this time were, uh, you're all going to hate me on this one. Trader Sam's. I have never been there. I was so excited to get in there. We got in there and it's cool. It's really unique, fun. There was excitement, but I think I overhyped it. That's and so, uh, I was a little point. let down. That, that one let I could down see there getting because that. overhyped. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it was just I, overhyped. It was great and it was cool, but what were you saying, brother? You're about. I didn't know that was your first time there. You should have let us know. You had your back to the whole restaurant. And I was looking at you. You should have switched with us. I didn't know that. So what really made it let me down is I had to look at you the whole time. Yeah, exactly that. what I'm talking about here. And that is I the downside of Trader Sam's. <laughs> and I was all silver at that point, dressed up like a maniac for the Halloween party. Exactly. It was actually a fun time because there was 30 of us all in costume and knowing everybody in there. But yeah. I don't know. I just, I think I was expecting dancing monkeys or something crazy <laughs> like that. And it just wasn't going to happen. I think I, I did save you from Kurt's plumber crack, though, by sitting on this direction. So yeah, like, sure, wearing some low rise pants that day. Yes. Oh, well, sorry, there's, sorry, there's that's on the podcast. That's though, something now, you Kurt. can't get out out of your memory. Individual podcast. <laughs> and then I think they were a little. I, just, I think they were a little low on the shenanigans while we were there. Yeah, I think it's about the bartenders as well. Yeah. There's there's a guy, Murph, that works there, and he's incredible. He gets everyone involved. I forgot who what it was. But it was somebody who was there for the first time was sitting at the same tricky chair I was sitting at. Yeah. And I went up to the bartender and I'm like, hey, I said, we have the friends at the table. Both of their first times, they both happened to be sitting in the tricky chair. Can you work some magic? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, really? You can't just push your little button to, to make it work? It's come, I know you know what you're talking about. That happened so to me just, in June, Andy. We, yeah, we I was, went I was with nine of us. We got the surfboard table. I waited for two yeah. hours to get the surfboard table. 
and they didn't pull it. You know, I don't know. So it's really, and we were there long enough. It's, you're telling me in the hour change we were there, you guys couldn't pull that off. They were busy. I mean, they had a full, a full restaurant or a full lounge. What yeah. was it, Jeff, what was the other one you had? The other one was the pretzel bread pudding was good, but then the violet sake, I'd been hearing about that for a long time. I think, again, I overhyped it. It's felt a little bit too sweet for me. By the time I was done with it, I was like, wow, that was really sweet. And I don't know that I'd order it again. Again, I think I've got overhyped for me, but. All right. Good. When I check them off, now I can check them off that I've done them. So I've got that. I'll be looking for a new brother. Yes. Send your resumes in whenever you would like. Is there after, this airs, after this airs, I'm kicked off. Yep. I'll go to that role. Don't worry. Hello. <laughs> Nick, you're in. I blew my chance with the, the mustard at Boma. You did. How can, I can lie. I don't hate it. Dan, did you have one? I did. I had I had not been there since Tron opened, so Tron was one of my yeah. must-dos. So on Magic Kingdom Day, went there early, snagged the queue, and I will say it was fun, but it was not like mind-blowing fantastic. I think I was talking to Glenn about this too. Guardians, mind-blowing. It was awesome. Star Wars was mind-blowing awesome, but that was good. It was fun. I didn't have Jeff and Danielle in the front in their suits when I wrote it. So that may have made it all a little bit better on the Halloween night, but it was very short too. I would have liked to have written it maybe at night. I didn't get a chance to do it at night, but it was good, but not necessarily on my must do every time when I go next time. Like Guardians is uh, and Rise of the Resistance is, but this one is okay if I can make it great, but it was fun. Yeah. Heard that before. Andy. You texting friends or did you have a must do you got done? <laughs> Actually, I, uh, my neighbors are down at, at Disney right now. So she's, my neighbor Alyssa sent me pictures. Oh. Uh, she was like, she was like, we also dumped at a banshee yesterday. So don't be alarmed if you see Smokey. That's the, what Iris named it, find down the alley. I'd say I was looking at, he was going to the Christmas, the Halloween party with 60 some friends. That was awesome. And the fact that a bunch of us got dressed up as, Different rides, different attractions, different lands. And according to Glenn Kessler, it was all the shenanigans were transpired by a bunch of drunken yahoos at TDC. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to, I was going to talk, bring in the events next. So, you already brought in the Halloween party. Everyone had a good time at the Halloween party. Any stories or special things going on there? I, I have to say, one thing that kind of led into the Halloween party, and Dan, I'm going to put you, uh, I'm going to talk about you for a moment, is we're at Trader Sam's. And all of a sudden, Dan starts hanging out with us because his party with a bunch of party poopers and only sat down for one drink and he wanted to stay. Dan leaves, goes, gets dressed, comes back. Perfect cast member from the Haunted Mansion. Kept this great straight face the whole night. But you see it early on, people coming in. We all went to the bathrooms at the poly to change. And all of a sudden, some of us like Glenn was already all silvered up. But it was fun seeing people come in one, go out one way, come in another. <laughs> yeah. Glenn, you were all silvered up. What'd you, what was the color last time you were at the Halloween party? <laughs> yeah, purple last time. I had to up it. I had fully planned on painting my whole body silver and my arms and my face and everything like that. When I tried out the silver paint in the Florida heat, it just melted it right <laughs> off, so it didn't work. So I ended up only putting it on my beard, and and that was about it. And then all my clothing was shiny silver. But yeah, I was Tomorrowland, so that was like the rocks, basically, and the kind of vibe. And then I put stickers on myself. I had a sock on my back for Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, yeah. the twenty three nineteen sock that uh, mm-hmm. if I went and got a Tactic Hero <laughs> from Buzz Lightyear, so I could have that sticker on me, and mm-hmm. just and I then I doused myself in gasoline, so I smelled like the Tomorrowland Speedway. I thought oil, about doing that. Oil and gas leak. Excellent. Any other good memories from the Halloween party? I love that picture we had. I would say the parade. Yeah. When you're talking about must is that was definitely a must do for us this trip. Just knowing that one, at, we had never been there and everyone was going. Yeah. I mean, going to a Halloween party and act, like being able to trick or treat with your adult friends, that's pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. But I will say the parade though. Seeing that headless horseman yeah. gave me goosebumps like that. That was that was so cool, and it was just like everybody silent before the actual parade. Like yeah, yes. he had his own moment, and it was amazing. So this is my second uh, Halloween 
already my hus- my son and I were actually down there right around eight, eight years ago this time. And we didn't do the parade. He was seven at the time. But yeah, watching that parade was everybody. We all met around the same area. A lot of us were over it was frontier land and we just hung out, watched it. And then, oh, that was great. And, and the cadaver dams were singing right across from where we were standing too, right before the parade, which was a yeah. Cool yeah, my buddy John is a, a dapper Dan, and he was actually, he wasn't scheduled that night, but I looked up, and he was up there performing, so. That, that was a good spot. Whoever scoped that out, that was a great spot. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Very cool. And it was amazing seeing some of the parade uh, floats go by, and then seeing some of our friends dress up, almost like they were themed and could could have been coming right off the floats or going onto the floats. The gingers were just perfect oh. as the hatbox ghost and the the bride bubba as well with his hatbox ghost and seeing them juxtaposed against the tall floats of the haunted mansion coming through just epic and just so, how interactive the cast members were like cousin heather got a ton of love as those cast members were going through the parade that was great to see speaking of cousin heather the next event i wanted to bring up was the jelly rolls dueling pianos did anyone attend that event can we just end the mystery of the question you're going to ask later? Everyone's favorite thing that happened at G3. <laughs> it was, uh, we got to give credit where credit is due. Nick and Carlin and cousin Heather, you nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. I thought I brought it last time with Yeehaw Bob. We had some great memories there, unforgettable bonding stuff. But this was the event of the G3. Thank you <laughs> for making that happen. I still want Yeehaw Bob, though. Like, next time we're all there, let's go there as well. But, yeah, Jelly Rolls for us was a place that we wanted to bring all of you guys. It's so awesome for me. You guys may know my story of going to the conferences. And the last G3... There were two things at the conference that I always missed and wasn't a part of, partly because I, I really didn't feel part of the community. So I didn't like, like invite myself to these when they were crashing into kimonos for doing the karaoke. And then when they did dueling pianos, jelly rolls, it was always that mysterious place on the corner of the boardwalk that I would walk by and never know what the heck went on in there on Saturday nights. And Oh my gosh. I'm so excited that I've been able to bring the community, our community into those places and just kill it. And what I liked is, and granted, one of the, one of the gentlemen on the piano is somebody that Heather knows, but the love he gave to our group. And then even as, and Glenn was still there, as we were closing things down, he was giving shout outs to the pod father. He was. And that was at one in the morning. Oh, really? I was, I, yeah. I'd already left. You had already left, but he still went out. Yep. But he did one part where, hey, let's, if you truly are Disney geeks, let's touch your magic. And they played a lot of obscure Disney songs. And I think everybody was crushing it. Yeah. It, it, that was left at the bar. That was fun. He did meet me on the way out. He just was asking me about the community, the podcast, and all this stuff. And then he sent me an email the next day, too. That's nice. So, yeah, very good touch to the evening. But what was your favorite? Does anyone have a favorite performance at the Dueling Pianos? Too uh, many. There were so many. I have three. Sweet Home but... Alabama. Sweet Home <laughs> yeah, Alabama. That was good. True yelling, roll tide. And then I went up because people that know Madison hates Alabama. She's an LSU girl. I went up and said, roll tide. I thought she was going to straight up murder me. <laughs> she was like, maybe different words. And I'm like, I'm never talking to you again. I'm <laughs> mad at you. But see Trey get into that and during the whole, she told me the roll died. That was fun. That was awesome. Country songs. I know. Jen Pulliam yeah. during the Dixieland song, she did a dance and <laughs> it was like the Holy Spirit had overtaken her. I was just, she's in another, she is in another level dancing. And like there was people all around just staring at her during that dance. And it was, all you could do is just, Clap along and applaud. It was impressive. That's what happens at Jelly Rolls. <laughs> Carlin and I are dancing to, what was it? Uh, Grease. Like they started playing Grease and Carlin and I just don't yeah. even think twice and, and d- get up and dance in front of the stage. Well, Nick, you and Carlin have been there several times, right? How does the geeks from the podcast rank in their evenings it's there? Having that many people, that energy, with the same energy that you bring to things like yeehaw bop we all show up there it's 
the energy is probably normally not as much as we bring it. <laughs> you think? I would rank it one of the top knives we've had there. Yeah. I would maybe say it's the best night we've had. You can say that. How you guys experience it is just so much fun. I, I know it's, like it's $20 to get in, and that is a lot of money to be shelling out for one person to get in somewhere. And I complain every time I give that $20 away. But at the end of the night, I'm glad I did it. It was fun. For as long as we were there, if you break down, it's what, $2 an hour, $3 an hour? You know, we were there from, what, 7 o'clock until 1? Yeah, I think we left a little early, maybe before that. Carlin, I don't know if any of you realize Carlin lost her diamond out of her engagement ring. Really? I, Kurt, you were gone by this point, actually. Oh, I didn't take it. And, uh, she came up to me. She goes, I don't want to ruin your night. But she showed me a ring, and diamond is gone. Yep. And I'm like, all right, I pull out my phone, I am open my flashlight up, a couple next to me, they're like, what are you looking for? I'm like, my wife's diamond. They're like, oh my gosh, they pull out their phone. I go in the back hallway, all the piano people are like, what are you looking for? And I'm like, my wife's diamond. They're like, oh my gosh, we're going to help you. <laughs> Let me get the manager. And then I go back outside and look on the floor and I swear like 20 people are just like scouring the floor with their phones helping and then i looked down right by the stairs and boom i found it oh so, gosh did find it everything intact just gotta take it to the jeweler Thank and get the bad wow. boy well, that's a good ending story there. yeah from a really tragic one one other tender moment that i'd be remiss if we didn't mention was the song you got a friend in me which oh, they shouted out for kate and we were all there with our bands and that was an amazing moment. And the uh, flat Kate was there and the cutout Kate was there. And I know there's some good video on that one. That one kind of makes me tear up every time I see that video run through our, our Facebook community. So just th there was laughter and there was sharing. And then there was a moment like that, that is beautiful and tender and, and speaks to the beauty of this community, the connections that we have and the friendships that have formed. And even those who can't be with us, we're going through stuff. We, we got you. We're thinking about you and, and can't wait till you're at the next event with us and making, making those same memories with us next time. Thanks for remembering that guys. Wow. I'm looking at some of the questions. I wonder, Glenn, one of your questions I really liked, what was your favorite new thing you did, ate or drank? Anyone have a good one that we haven't covered yet already? Or is that? I, this is the first time I've been to a. Like you can't like not like the one of the musical shows in the oh, American yeah. Millions or yeah the boys the, the men we, we gotta mention the yeah. boys the men concert uh, first time we've ever actually been inside there that was so much fun I sat with Samantha and in front of us was the whole group of us we had a bunch of us but then in front of us was Selena and Rob Madiri and then when I'll make love you came on Rob and I couldn't help but get up and sing together you could have helped I think, it. I think <laughs> somebody put a video on there that was adorable that was captured on video for the internet to see <laughs> well. <laughs> That was fun. That was a special moment. What did you think of the Boys the Men concert, Jeff? It was so funny because when I came down to DC, we were at Glenn's house, and I don't know how that topic came up because I think that was wasn't that before we even knew Boys the Men was going to be a G three. I, I don't it, know. It might have been. I'll, I'll talk about Boys to Men all the time. Oh. <laughs> Just, like Jeff, how was it for you? Because you did what two shows? We did two shows. Thanks to Glenn and Rebecca. I think you gave us your tickets, and then I think. Kurt or someone else gave Jackie and Selena tickets because we were going, we were all for planning, we were all planning to go to the eight o'clock show only. And thank you. Wendy, you know, yeah. Wendy Fox and cousin Heather gave up their tickets. Is that who it was? Thank you. Thank you to them. I forgot who, who had given it to them. So we were able to go to the early show. And then as we're leaving the early show, Jackie says to, to me, she's like, I want to be in the front row for the eight o'clock show. I was like, totally agree. And we asked a cast member, when do we need to start lining up to be in the front row? And she said, there are people in line already. You might as well get in line right now. So we stood there right as everyone left that early show. We went and stood in the same line that we were in and stood there for the entire second show so that we could be there for the third show when just kept sending. That's when Danielle walked clear around to Canada to get us food. I left at one point to go to Morocco to get a mule and Jackie and Selena left. So it was like our home base and we had other people in line doing the same thing, just random people. And we were front row right in the one third section where 
one of them would stand and Wanye was there for most of the time and posed for pictures for me. I was taking a selfie. He was walking by, saw I was taking a selfie, came back, leaned down and pointed at the camera and then was singing five feet away from me. It was just really um, an amazing thing. I've idolized Wanya Morris since I was a kid. I always wanted to be him when I was a kid. Loved the way they, boys to men say. So to be able to see them up close after all these years, they also were, just to know my obsession and why, they were also my wedding song with Danielle. We danced to Color of Love, which is a more obscure boys to men song. That kind of have it all culminate and get the front row was just awesome to be there with Danielle and friends. And the early show with everybody else was great too, just because it was like everywhere I looked, they were friends of mine at a show, and that's just really an amazing experience to be enjoying something you love and have your friends there. Something special for me, uh, for sure. Very cool. That is awesome. Dan, did you do anything new? I did. I, I know Jeff's trying to poo-poo Trader Sam's a little bit, but I had never done Trader Sam's. And maybe you overhyped it. I really didn't have much expectations. I really enjoyed it. I mean, maybe it's, it was the groove, but that was really fun to get in there and do that. And just having the people with the knowledge of what time to line up and, you know, who needs to get their name on what sheet and all that kind of stuff. That was fantastic. So really enjoyed that. And another new thing was on the way over to Jelly Rolls, we stopped in the Abacadab Bar and this was Samantha Kuhn's espresso martini. So I, tr- I tried that and I'm a, I love coffee. That was fantastic. That was, and she said it's probably one of the best, if not the top of her list. So that was definitely a new uh, best of so that was a great favorite new thing and she knows what she's talking about she does good that's one. good Glenn did you have something I actually have two one was we snuck off Rebecca Amanda Lamb and Jen Wynn and I snuck off to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios for one night that's right and I've not been to Universal Studios at all I was like actually putting my hands over my eyes so I wouldn't see some of the normal universal stuff because I'm waiting until the kids are old enough to go experience Harry Potter. But, but I love love her movies. I always have, I dressed up as Freddy Krueger as a kid for Halloween. This was a really cool opportunity to go through some scare houses with some friends. And Rebecca and I are both horror movie nuts, but Amanda and Jen are scared. And so you need that Laurel and Hardy. You like you need your straight man and then you need the jokester. And it was so fun walking through these haunted house experiences with the two of them <laughs> jumping and screaming and running and us like protecting them or whatever. And, and that was cool. And scare zones that they have set up. It was magical. And then amazingly, like the food was phenomenal there. They really bring it. They had food themed to the horror films like one of the big ones this year was the um last of us which it's i don't know if you've ever seen heard about this one but it's like a a zombie apocalypse but it happens by way of mushrooms taking over human beings and and so these like people turn into mushrooms there was a house that you could walk through but also the food was all mushroom themed and and looked like it was out of that world oh it was so cool so cool theming Star Wars kind of level theming, Galaxy's Edge Cruiser kind of level theming, but then actually like really tasty food uh, as well. So that was fun. That was amazing. And I hope I, I don't think I spoiled anything from my actual visit. Although, man, did we have a great experience in Diagon Alley where so Rebecca Slytherin and she was all dressed up. We all wore our different houses. All four of us happened to be different houses. So I'm Gryffindor. She's Slytherin. And then we had a Hufflepuff and a Ravenclaw. And we went through Diagon Alley and the Death Eaters were walking around at night. Green lights had been placed in the land. It was magical. They would do performances from time to time. And there was one moment. This is one of my favorite moments of G3, even though it's at Universal, <laughs> when they can't talk. The, the Death Eaters can't talk. They're that kind of character. But one of them comes up to Rebecca, sees her Slytherin jersey and says in pantomime, uh, are you one of us? And he points at his dark mark on his, or t- towards his wrist where his dark mark would be on, on his uh, forearm. And he's basically, do you have one? So Rebecca turns over her arm and she's got tattoos on her arm, like right there. And he's, ha, huh. he taps, he holds her hand, taps his wand to activate her dark mark. She's then ushered in as a death eater. 
It was the happiest moment I think she's ever had in her life. And we were all there to watch. It's so great. So that was cool. Oh, I'm so glad your best experience was not with us. It was with a small subset <laughs> of us. And then you're going to hate my next one because it is only Rebecca and I. After G3 had ended and most of our friends had left and gone home, we booked one extra day at Hidani club level. And I've never stayed club level uh, before. And we were dead set on taking fullest advantage of the club level experience. And that means, if you don't know, they have a special dedicated floor in, I, I said Kidani, I, I'm sorry, I meant Jumbo. It's in Jumbo. They have a fully dedicated floor. The top floor of the Jumbo ceremonial house, all the way up at the top, is only for club level. You I need special uh, access to be able to get up there. And once you're up there, they have this dining space that is catered throughout the entire day. There's a breakfast service. There's a midday service. There's an evening service. There's a dessert service. There's always beverages out there. You can ask for more. There's waiters, waitresses that will assist you with anything you need. They can make it to go. So you can take it to the pool, which we did, or to the hot tub. You can walk around on the Savannah. I, it is an absolute luxe experience. I, incredible. And not that many points, believe it or not. I think it was 23 points oh. for the night that we stayed. Oh, so. I didn't realize you could do it with DVC points to get the oh, yes, club level. Yes, absolutely. I don't think I knew that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's and they have different BOMA. BOMA all day long. <laughs> it, it really was BOMA all day long. My favorite thing at BOMA breakfast is the pecan, like sticky buns kind of thing. They mm. had that. They had goat cheese eggs. They had, I, I don't want to go through everything, yeah. but they had service throughout the entire day. We took full advantage. We counted it up how many drinks and food services we had from there. We made money on the deal. <laughs> 23 points is not enough for, for what they're charging uh, for that. It was an absolutely wonderful, incredible experience. And, and I don't know if we'll ever do that again, but, but it was just great. Well done, Glenn. And that was to say, Rob Madiri had a question. He was supposed to be with us tonight. And you kicked it off, Glenn. How did it feel experiencing attractions with geeks new and old again? <laughs> there, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than hanging out with our geeks filling vehicles or boats or yeah. an entire side of a parade or jelly rolls or everything is better. To next point, like everything is better when you have the group, when you have 20, 30, 50, 80 of your friends. It's just a remarkable yeah. Thing and real friendships, and more than that, friendships that don't just exist at Disney, friendships that exist outside. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to. Dan is in Maryland, and we've been trying to get together beforehand. I missed the last Renaissance Festival for stupid COVID, but I can't wait to continue to cultivate these great relationships. Rob, who's not here, he's been to my house before. We've had his kids over to the house, met him in Pennsylvania just a month ago, uh, and shared experiences with him. There's nothing better than this community, Kurt. Hey, Dan. I don't know. You're new to this. Yeah, I tried I to tell say, everybody to welcome the new people. Yeah. For this question, what's your experience with new and old geeks? And from my perspective, it was almost all new. Mm -hmm. I had a few folks that I had met at the, at the Renaissance Festival in Maryland. And those folks were all very welcoming. Jeff and, and Jen Datchelder, really nice. But just even people that I didn't know from the first nomad here's your bingo sheet people are like oh let me i know that person and that person let me show you who's so it was just totally welcoming open arms get to know you and it just feels like everybody has a, a similar personality persona likes just love of disney and it was just a blast i can't first one i can't wait for the next one so it was fantastic i enjoyed it and thank you for that everyone who was there for the welcoming with open arms and making sure I was included in things. And because um, I, I truly was purely solo. If it wouldn't have been for the people that, you know, that I went around and did things with, I would have been also my own doing stuff. So I very much appreciate that. And it was a blast. I just say that like everybody who I talked to and myself included, like Dan, you were like the MVP, the new person who showed <laughs> up, the new guy who showed up, who was just like instantly cool. 100%. And Love you, man. Love you, man. You, you well, wouldn't well, talk to the playground. You were curling. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. I've been listening for a while and I just, I felt like I stood in. So I knew this was a little bit of a risk, but not much of a risk at all, really. So thanks. Thanks, everybody. 
That makes me feel good, Dan. We had a great time at the Quest for Geek and Glory. That was another. That was awesome. That was fun. Cool event. And I'm so glad my team abandoned me, never showed up. <laughs> and so I was. Well, Curdy, let's back up on this abandoning things. Second time you've been abandoned. I'm using air quotes for the people that can't see. Maybe it's you because you abandoned us last year on the record. Okay. We could argue. You were, you guys stayed at the and bar and didn't go to the Trey, final. We went. <laughs> we were back at the scene of the crime at Advocate of a Bar, which I can't pronounce, I guess. But I was sitting there with Dan and Samantha and a few other people. I said, hey, I said, that's right where Jed and I were sitting. Yeah. When Kurt went to the bathroom and said, oh, you ditched me. I'm like, mm, you're sitting right there. <laughs> I had a good time there before Dueling That's pianos. a fun bar. That was fun. I had, I had some drinks there. It was busy, but the service was fantastic. And Quest by for- the way, that couple that we, we took over their table because they were leaving and we told they were, they said they were going to bar hop. And we we're like, Hey, we're going to Jelly Rolls. You guys should come. And no kidding. They were sitting there right next to the group, I think, for the entire night. So <laughs> I don't know if we recruited them into geekdom, but they definitely enjoyed the camaraderie there. From Jelly they're, from Rolls. Su- they're from Southern Illinois. They're not too far from uh, Chris Luttrell. Yeah, they were all about it. But the quest was fun. I had Dan and Nick and Nick Jason. Malio. Yeah. And Jason. Yeah, the four of us. We had a really good time doing that. Then you guys that was fun. That was actually one of my favorite activities. Just yeah. number one, just to hang out with people you have it and get to know them a little bit as you walk around. But as Nick was commenting, wow, this is awesome. I didn't know this was here. I didn't know that was here. It was just it was fun. It was really fun. So yeah, big thank you to to Weddy and Veronica and I believe Selena who put that together. I agree completely. That was a blast. My team finished in third place, so I, I had a good time. I haven't audited. it was all Samantha it was all Samantha and, and Noreen. Yeah, I want to audit the results. I haven't seen. I felt like we did pretty good. Also. Yeah. <laughs> you sat down in 82. It's so bad. It's like TDC. You just got to just gotta find the right people to know, bribe them a little. It works. Nice. I will say it was, it was a lot of fun just being in a park this time. Yep. It, last year, I was exhausted. After. I was so much more to go. But yeah, this inside the park, I know it was a little more of a challenge, I think, for them, but that was fall. I thought it was flawless. Right. I had to, pulled it off. It was yeah. a lot more enjoyable. And you know, the little things like when we went into the rock and roller coaster to find the Mickey shaped heads on the guitars. Yeah. A little a challenge. Yeah, it was. But kudos to the amazing cast members that were more than happy to like, because they knew we were up to something. And they were more than happy and more than eager to help. They were prepped by Wendy and team. They were. But still. Yeah. yeah, they didn't point out the rock and roll or the guitar no. hidden Mickey. They were just like, Not direct. it's up there somewhere. Well, like, yeah, this row. And we're the, like, it's up. Yeah. yeah. At least you knew it was on the ceiling, which is a, exactly. a good hint. <laughs> Correct. Which I never looked up at that ceiling before. So that was like, yeah, it gave me a reason cool. to do that. One of the toughest questions I got for my trip report is, when's the next G3? And I wonder from you guys, I'm trying to take opinions should we do another one and when should we do it i know you talked about doing potentially disneyland next year with with your lovely wife yeah everything's on the table it's as as my friend joe will say it's a discussion not a decision i'd be all for another one i'd do it again in in the fall or do you take 2024 off and being in early 2025 yeah that was those are my two that of my personally two choices i'm thinking about do we go Possibly again when Kevin's there, or do we go wait another eighteen months and go in the yeah. late winter? Are you saying? Are you saying take take a year off and then do Disneyland? So like, really plan that out? There are some people going to Disneyland already. I know. Okay, yeah. For Jen Batchelder's. I don't know what my timing birthday. I don't know what my timing would be, and I wouldn't make it an event because I'm going to take Margita and she wants to go do and stuff, but. If people were there. So you're saying she doesn't want to be annoyed by us? I'm trying to be nice. That's true. That'll be her first time to Disneyland. Yeah, you want to do it right then. Yeah. But, yeah, any other thoughts? You can tell me now or later. I'm going to start getting feedback on that topic. It would be far out, but if there's some way we could have a G3 during Christmas time, that'd be maybe a nice thing to have mm. happened just because we did the Halloween party. Maybe we do. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, mm-hmm. I know that can be a tough time for people to be able to fit a trip in. Maybe you know, you go, what you could do is you could you go early December or mid December, and it's one of the best times to go to the park to see them all decorated. 
Yeah. Especially Hollywood yeah, so you're not studios. saying go Christmas between Christmas and New Year's. That's a tough. No, no. I was thinking sometime yeah. after Thanksgiving Christmas before time. like December 15th, that yeah. early, like uh, he was saying. So yeah. you're not getting into Christmas time, but just, you know, from a theme standpoint, I think that would be. It's a good and thought. We could do a secret Santa, you know. It's a good thought. It's a Santa really good thought. I hadn't thought of that. Jeff always comes up with good stuff. That's or New Year's. I know New Year's. <laughs> I like that. I know that New Year's. Almost. That New Year's last year. I was down there with some friends. Nick and Carl were down there. You know, it's a packed house on New Year's. But if you have an experience New Year's on Epcot, at yeah. Epcot, it is unbelievable. It's crazy. It's incredible. We were legit at a rave in the China Pavilion. Yeah, I know. Fire. <laughs> yeah. Cryo. Point blank. Uh-huh. Face. Oh, yeah. It was insane. I'll never forget that. I want to go back immediately this year. For Correct. It's so hard not to. Yeah. Exactly. Well, guys, did we catch everything you wanted to cover from this amazing latest G3? Geektoberfest? I think so. We're good. Covered a lot. Oh, you guys did great. And yeah, thanks again. Thanks for coming on, being the first round table. Thanks for coming to G3. I'm glad you all seem to have had a good time. Even the new guy. Thanks for having me. It sounds like, what's the, it's like the laugh guy at Laugh Floor. What is that guy? That guy. Yeah. That guy at Laugh Floor. I had to look at my sticker. Great job, guys. Thanks for coming on. Stay in touch. Of course. Of course. And congratulations again, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did we mention? Father to Godfather. I learned. I don't know if you mentioned it on Father to Grandfather. Day, grandfather. I don't know if I re- mentioned while I was recording. I got the news today. I'm going to be a. Going from pod father, what was it? Dog father to dog grandfather. To but pod father you know? sounds better. Yeah. You don't have to bring your green kid to Disney World. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm, I don't want to look that far ahead, but I just I can't wait. It's going to be fun. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, guys. Well thank done. you. Good job. Done? We're he, done. He, 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 you yeah. sit in <laughs> silence. <laughs> Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Thanks, guys. Great to get back with you guys and get your perspectives on the Grand Geek and Gathering. Got lots of more friends coming up in the coming weeks. A bunch of roundtables I've been recording over the last few weeks. Lots of fun sharing our favorite moments from the Grand Geek and Gathering. Big shout out to Rob Madiri, good friend of ours. Many of us here at the Geek and Family. Love to celebrate big moments in our friends' lives. And this is a big one. Rob and I, I know have been talking about this. He'll send me text messages all the time. Keep me updated on his pursuit of working for Disney, specifically Disney World. So congratulations, Rob. It's so fantastic. I'm so excited for you. So proud of you. Perseverance you showed and the networking and how you went about getting your dream job at Disney World. Going to be moving the whole family down, Katie and the kids. So congratulations to Rob. I'll see you in January. He'll be down there working it all out. Told me you sold this house too this morning. So that's fantastic. In 48 hours, he sold this house and got the price that he wanted a little more. And that's fantastic, Rob. So excited for you. And selfishly, I'll get to see you every time I go to Disney World. So fantastic. So maybe. I got get a bunch of I got a bunch of guys down there who live there now. I, I want to do a new segment coming up after I get through some of these trip reports I've got booked, but going to get that local perspective on the ground what's going on down at Disney World. So great job, Rob Madiri. Hey, big shout out to Dan and Holly Austin. I got a surprise in the mail this week. I'm just picking up a mug here. It's got one of my favorite pictures from any any Disney animation from the Jungle Book with Baloo and Mowgli. Mowgli sitting on Baloo. And it's like a hand drawing, seems like, too, from the animation, which I really, really love. It's a great design here. So thanks, Dan and Holly. Watch your mail. You might be getting a surprise in the mail, too, from the Geek and Family. Shout out to Susie Roding. I know she's a Patreon supporter, too, and reached out to me, I think, for the first time to do a trip report. She's going down for the Wine and Dine Race Weekend. I've got a bunch of geek friends going to be there for the Wine and Dine Race Weekend. So we'll be doing a roundtable trip report for sure. Susie, you can either join in on that or we'll do a separate one just for you. It's all up to you. 
Thanks for finally reaching out to me for a trip report since 2018, been a listener. How many of you guys have been listeners for a long time and I don't even know you're out there? I think there's a bunch. Definitely, don't be shy. I'll make it easy. People have said to me, I'm really easy to talk to. So if you want to do a trip report, I'd love to have some new people. So thank you, Susie, for reaching out to me. We'll get that done as soon as you come back from the wine and dine. Take some notes. It makes my life easier and get yourself organized and you'll you'll be great. I know you will. Thanks, Susie. Let's get our trips ready for the end of the year and into next year. Thanks, Amanda Mead, who I'll be doing her, a trip report with her, but she was setting up a trip with Margita and Judy, the Travel and Tierras. Thank you for everyone who books their trips with the Travel and Tierras. And, and sorry I didn't get a chance to talk to you. I was busy at work when you were setting up your trip. And Amanda's also a Patreon supporter. So shout out to Amanda Mead, who's booking another trip with us. And we really appreciate your business. Again, just email them, travelintieras at gmail.com. And again, thank you everyone who supports me on patreon.com. That's a website you can go to to donate to the show. Yeah, just like the cost of a Starbucks coffee. $5 is a great way to support the show, and I appreciate everyone. Patreon.com, I am cranking out live recordings, coffee walks, and there'll be some other in-park audio coming out soon. Mostly coffee walks so far, and I'm enjoying listening back to them myself. Getting the details of my G3 experience the morning after each day. And again, I recorded and released a bunch of those recently, especially this past week. And I really do appreciate you, though, when you support me from Patreon.com. Make a pledge, and I appreciate, again... Everyone who contributes to this show, because we're committed to helping you enjoy Disney World Vacation. Just reach out to us. Do a trip report, and thank you for a bunch of people who's reached out recently. I'll try my best to get you on the show. Book trips with the Travel and Tierras. You can email me at kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. Thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you, geeks. Have a magical day, and I hope all your dreams come true.